do another bench press, incline press, or decline press, neither with bars nor dumbbells until you watch this video fully and completely. I'll show you three movements that we've used to build upper body stronger than twisted steel for everyone from kids to teens to adults, overcoming past injuries and in every discipline from calisthenics to hockey to swimming to tumbling and power moves. Lee Weiland, Pacific Rim Athletics, and welcome to training. Don't get me wrong, the upper body is made for pressing. We even have a bunch of moves named press. Stall their press. L press. And crab press. And they require you to press your entire body mass through an even greater range of motion. And don't make the mistake of assuming it's just balance. Balance is a direct function of strength, but people end up with imbalances and overcompensations due to using mainstream exercises like the bench press. In fact, the physical therapist coaches on our team asked me to discuss this since they see 99% with bench press issues and they have to fix it all. If you wanna do bench press, by all means, go for it. I used to enjoy bench press and got up past 300, but you know what I enjoy more than bench press? True explosive upper body power built through body weight training like I mentioned. I made the mistake of using bench press and it actually stole power away from my upper body, made me feel slow back then, and it had the negative impact of making my shoulders extremely tight. On the other hand, me and my students are explosively doing handstands at all angles, muscle ups at all angles, tumbling, pushing, punching, and striking. Gold medal Olympic lifters don't even do bench press, and they're the most elite weightlifters in the world. Yet 80 to 90% of the population continues to use these mainstream methods and then walk around saying they're too old, too beaten up when they're just doing it to themselves. But if you apply the principles I'm going to show you, you won't be stuck, frustrated or injured. You really will gain substantial omnidirectional strength and power. My goal is to get people thinking about the entire puzzle, not just the small pieces and applying these principles to all of life. Now, since I'm discussing upper body strength in general, I do want to mention the numbers and forces we're talking about here. When we get up into advanced things like footless pressing, tumbling, power moves, or even just pushing stuff around like any normal human would. Even if a person can do a 300 pound plus bench press, doesn't mean their shoulders, elbows, wrists, tendons, and ligaments can handle the speed, movement, and power like striking with punches, tumbling, flares, or muscle ups like humans are designed to do. Let's look at three quick, simple, real life examples. Falling down and catching yourself, pushing something or someone with power, or punching. These are all strikes, and any of them generate between three and 10 times body weight. Even falling and catching yourself is striking the ground at a high force, and done with skill, striking the ground is a round off. So any of these strikes will hit with an average of five times body weight, immediate shock through your hand, wrist, elbow, and shoulder. Let's take a round off. For a 185 pound person times 10, that's 1,850 pounds per square inch. It's similar forces to a professional boxer who can punch between 500 and 1,500 pounds per square inch. And I cringe when I hear people assuming bench press or other mainstream weightlifting builds power or obsessing about their pectoralis. Stop thinking about IBPT, isolated body part training. It's like obsessing about how beautiful we can write a lowercase a. And these basics of human movement, let alone tumbling, punching, flares, explosive muscle ups, are things that bench press or typical gym workouts just don't train a person for. But I think it's the reason why people are fascinated with power moves. Something in the back of our minds intuitively knows the strength and force being generated in a controlled and balanced way. It's just good, good health and strength. It's why we train power moves specifically as one of the elements of power batics. So how do you do it? What are the three moves? The first move is gonna be the absolute basics. Just muscle building, nothing dynamic yet. That will be move two. I'm gonna start you out on the floor. 
pressing and see if we can get up to footless pressing. There's absolutely no need to use weights until you master your own body weight. Even professional lifters start with body weight or supplement with body weight. And no need to go for sets of 100. Get your first, then climb to 20, then 50. From there, we wanna get off the ground. Here's a beautiful one you can do with a mattress or a couple of couch cushions. Then press handstands from all angles. We've got our stalder, which is just legs out. Then feet together with the L press. And crab press. As the difficulty increases, the volume decreases. So at times you may just be practicing singles, exactly the same as a one rep max bench press. And obviously don't mistake videos for actual instruction, be it our videos or otherwise. You'll notice our students in the videos doing all this stuff. Here's Venny, Darren, and PJ all doing this training in their 50s and overcoming all kinds of injuries. Patrick was a big weightlifting advocate, but dropped all that and never felt better. Second move. This is where some power comes in, okay? Dynamic strength. This comes straight from power moves. And no, we're not just going to jump into flares or handstand circles. Although you can very well build the power for this. And it's exactly the same as punching and striking. Developing the biomechanics, leverage, and adapting the body to those sheer forces. Everyone can start with this, a push-up position, but dynamic hand hops. Just switches are first. This is the, the switches. Maintaining a hollow body, then two hands then even up in a handstand. And then even more difficult are full body rotations. Eventually, again, without feet. This directly transfers to punching power, to tumbling, to vaulting, and to power moves because it's keeping the entire frame of your body tight and leveraging it with speed. Third move will actually be a couplet. This will help you understand the chest more, both the strength side and the flexibility. On the one side, there's the stalder. This is actually the essence of chest strength. The chest is designed for adduction. Thus, why people do cable crossovers as a supplement after bench press. But a hundred times better for your chest, as well as your entire body, is the stall, and especially on rings. There's nothing else like it. Pulling the rings in close, from bent all the way to locked out arms, squeezing, plus the mobility of your hips and legs. Now imagine doing all this training for your upper body for thousands of reps over decades of time. What kind of shape will you think the shoulders will be pulled into? You got it, a hunched over position. So naturally, learning to go in the opposite direction expands the chest and increases its flexibility and even its strength. Let's look at just one of dozens of progressions we use. A wall hollow back. One can even turn this into pressing opening the chest, strengthening the shoulders, and preparation for a lifelong power and health. And everything in this video I consider to be basics. If one cannot do these, one has no business getting underneath weights, which in the final assessment become largely irrelevant. If you do apply these principles, you're going to advance to incredible levels. So subscribe, see you in the next video, and click the links to start training.